Hello, and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week. So for the full problem and the solution transcript, you can feel free to check out the description of this video on our YouTube channel. Uh, so this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week is a very cool one. We are going to prove uh, the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality, sometimes called the Schwartz inequality. And uh, first, I'm going to introduce a few things. Um, one is that I like bra cat notation because I'm a physicist. So um, I've seen this um, expressed in other ways. Some mathematicians like to use this. Um, like this, and there's no specification which one's complex cogent and which isn't until you put um, a bar on top. But um, in bra cat notation, it is implied that the one on the left, the bra, in this case the u, uh, is complex conjugate, and the one on the right, uh, I guess you I meant to point up here, and v, would be uh, not complex conjugate. Um, so just know that I'm going to use that notation, and I have it written up here if you forget, so you can just look up there. Anyway, um, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to note that um, the following, z, complex conjugate, I'm going to denote that with a star. Uh, z star z, that is going to be greater than or equal to zero. It is also known as the absolute value of z squared. Absolute value is greater than zero, and that is where I'm going to start. I'm going to now say, define some psi of x. And I'm going to let that be equal to u of x plus lambda v of x. Lambda is going to be a complex constant. Uh, so for lambda, this complex constant, um, u and v, if they're both real and integrable, uh, if they're real, then if you multiply a real thing by a complex constant, you should be able to accept that this psi of x, this should be a complex function. Uh, and now I'm going to use what I just said over here to now make the claim that psi star x times psi of x, this is going to be greater than or equal to zero. Uh, for the same reason as that, just because absolute value of something, always, absolute value always greater than zero. So from here, I'm going to now make the statement that if this function, uh, if this is greater or equal to zero, then if I take the integral psi of x, psi star of x, psi of uh, then this um, area under the curve of a curve that's always greater than or equal to zero, this should always be greater than or equal to zero as well. Uh, so uh, what am I going to do with this? I'm going to plug in what we have written for um, psi of x. Um, I'm going to note that we have a complex conjugate, um, and I'm going to carry that out. So I've written down what we get after substituting um, in what we have def defined for lambda of x, uh, which I did erase. I guess I'll write it off to the side if you still want it. Uh, and from here, I'm going to distribute and uh, FOIL appropriately. So when you do that, you get this. Ah, and after you do that, you get um, this large expression, which can be simplified a lot if we like to use um, this notation. Um, it doesn't necessarily, quote unquote, simplify it that much, but it does make it easier to look at. And if you just recognize that this um, notation means what it means and what I've defined it as, then you should be able to realize that this is equal to this. Uh, the following down here. And if you recall from earlier, we said this was greater than or equal to zero. So I'm going to rewrite, or put in, this is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, and from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now try to do something special with lambda. I'm going to try to find the value of lambda and lambda complex conjugate that makes this um, minimized. And if you've taken a Calc 1 class, you'll know that you can do this by taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero. So um, this can actually be done just as though lambda, lambda, complex conjugate, where it was uh, like a variable in those Calc 1 classes that you might have seen. So my move is going to be taking the partial derivative with respect to lambda, and then setting that equal to 0. And then I'm going to solve for, uh, you're going to see later, I'm going to solve for lambda star. Complex conjugate of lambda.
Uh, so I've written out the process that we're going to carry out. Um, and it's actually very, very simple because we have just uh, lambda here and a lambda there. And uh, these scalar products, um, what we call them, um, those are going to be constants. So we can treat those like constants. And um, you can probably see that by the definition up there. Um, we, are, we have two functions um, of x, and we're taking the integral. Um, and that is going to be a definite integral when it is carried out. And if you do that, you should get a constant. So therefore, we treat these like constants. We um, then get the very pretty simple result of. Uh, and here, it is very pretty. It's very easy to see that um, you can solve for lambda star. And when you do that, you get um, uh, lambda star is equal to negative um, bracket uv uh, divided by bracket vv. And um, lambda star is a complex conjugate of lambda. Uh, there are two ways you could get lambda. You could do this again, but uh, take the partial derivative with respect to lambda star. You could also just note that um, the complex conjugate of this will be given by lambda is equal to negative v for u ket divided by v, v. And you can kind of tell this by the definition. Uh, you can also just take my word for it. Uh, if you take the complex conjugate of uh, a bra b ket, you get b bra a ket. So um, you can get that for lambda, that for lambda star, and we are going to plug that back in to what we came up with earlier. So this thing down here. Uh, and then you'll see something very cool happen. Uh, so substituting that in gives you the following. Uh, and this is all greater than or equal to 0. Uh, yeah. Uh, and from here, I'm going to start by noticing that this cancels out with this. Uh, now I'm going to multiply both sides by a uh, bracket inner scalar product BV. Uh, so Uh, when I do that, this is going to vanish, this, this, and we can just multiply this with that. Uh, and then from here, collecting terms, shifting everything around, that will get you. Uh, I'm going to put this on the other side. I'm going to note that there are negative signs that we can um, cancel out rather easily. Uh, and what that is going to give you is that is going to give you your final answer. Uh, normally, I skip gritty algebra, and I would like to do the same here. Um, so that is the Schwartz inequality. It is very helpful in quantum mechanics. It's a very good start to learning operators and things like that, because um, this bracket notation is really, really helpful for that. Um, so thank you very much for watching this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. Uh, if you would like to see more uh, Problems of the Week and Advanced Knowledge Problems of the Week, you can feel free to click up there. If you would like to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, you can feel free to click right there. If you want to visit us on centermath.org, feel free to click down here. If you're on a mobile device, there should be an I in the top corner up there. And if you click that, it should give you the same links. Thank you very much for watching.